Today I'm making a painting for some younger friends using only what they have available to them to paint with. It's going to be a watercolor painting and we're going to be using a pencil, a big fat brush, a flat brush, and a little round brush. We will be using only paint from a tray like this because that's all they have. Of course, for watercolor, we will have some water and some paper towels. So when we begin, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to just lay it out a little bit with a pencil. That's what we're going to use the pencil for. And I think what we're going to do There, now we've got our basic building shape. Later on we'll be able to make it into a barn, or a house, or a cabin, depending on what you want. This is going to be your roof, and this is going to be your main part of the building. I have a concept painting to show you. It looks much like this. So we're trying to do it on a bigger scale, as you can see. So we don't want the barn to be too too big. In this case, it's a barn because we're having it set farther back. All right, and then from your barn, actually, we might want I don't know, might want that barn to be a little bit bigger. But we want our this is this we're going to make a line across the paper. This is going to be our horizon. The horizon line where this is going to be our sky and this is going to be our ground and actually I do believe I have that a little too high so I'm going to erase it you can put it wherever you want it's just a matter of what I'm looking for for me I just wanted a little I want a little more sky than ground so I'm going to put it down just a little bit, but I still want it above the base of the barn because that means the horizon's farther back than the barn itself, or the cabin, or the house, whatever you want. All right. Now, the trees we don't have to draw in, they're going to go here, and there's going to be that road that runs right here, and then some grass in the foreground. So, our next step is going to be, we're going to wet the sky with just water. We're going to use our big fat brush for that. Oh, we're going to try not to spill the water. We don't want it too wet, but we want the whole area except for the grass and the barn wet so we may have to get extra water and you can tell it's wet if the surface is shiny don't want it super wet but want it all to be wet so we'll kind of bring this up to here Does it look shiny to you? I can't tell because I can't see what you're seeing from this angle. All right. Now it's going to dry a little and it's there's a good chance it's going to warp your paper a little bit. Don't don't worry. 
make your paper a little bendy. That's that's okay. It may make the sky interesting. Okay. And this little corner right there. A little bit right there. Right there. All right. Gonna take some water in our brush and get some blue. Get lots of blue on your brush. Just dab, dab, dab. I don't know if you can see that. Let me pull that in here. Just get some water and just scoop up the blue like this. Now, while it's still wet, we want to run the blue across back and forth, side to side. If you need to, you can get some more blue. Try not to paint on the barn, but if you do, you do. It's okay. And you can see, let's go here and try to get the blue right up to the barn without getting too much on there. Go only down to that horizon line. Get some more blue because I'm running out. If you go a little over the horizon line, not a big deal. Okay, now. You can see it's it's kind of not all evenly blue, and that's okay for what we're trying to do. Because, you know, it could have high clouds kind of breaking it up. I like to put a little extra blue up on the top. Just to make it look more like the sky. That really blue sky. So, now, you can see that. If you want a cloud, this is totally optional. You take one of your paper towels and wad it, up, wad it up a little bit and kind of go bloop. It looks like a funny cloud, doesn't it? Because it looks like a triangle. So we'll just kind of... That's not working very well, is it? So I don't recommend doing a cloud. We'll just get some more blue. Throw it on there. There. See, even I make mistakes. So... Now, what we want to do is rinse out, kind of take your brush and rinse it out in the water. And then go get some green. Green, green, green. And we didn't make this part wet because we're gonna do what's called wet on dry and get this green. We need some water in our brush for that green but it won't flow so easily as up there. We're just gonna bring it all the way across like we did before. More water in my brush and more green in my brush. And we'll just spread it out, spread it out, spread it out. And if you don't get it perfectly even, again, that's fine. We'll bring it right up to that horizon line. A little more water. Don't be afraid to get a little more water. You don't need a ton, but and then right up to the barn. See, I kind of went up on the barn. Oops, that's okay. No problem. Now I'm going to show you something cool if the blue is still wet. We probably should keep it this way. If that blue is still wet, we'll get some green on our brush and kind of just bring some up here. Now, you can also use one of your smaller brushes for this. I'm going to try this flat brush here. Get that wet. Get some green on it. And because, and then see, I'm just kind of making lines. But because, or you can do it sideways. Because the blue is still wet. Oops, I got a little on. That's okay. 
It's all good. What we're doing is making some a distant forest. And we don't want them all to be the same height. We want them to be bigger and smaller. Do some little ones. Now the blue has dried some, so it's really not running as much as I expected. But it's all good. It's all good. And that should do it for that. Now what we're going to do is make sure we rinse out our brushes in the water. And try to get some of the excess water out. Using a paper towel. You can dab. See all that extra water? You can even squeeze. Now you probably don't want to do it over your picture like I am. Maybe over here. Can you see that? Nope. Okay. Right there. <laughs> but anyway, that's how you get that. And that is all we're going to do for the first day. Hopefully we'll get all that done. It didn't take very long. Um, and so now what we want to do is let this dry because we want it to be completely dry before we make the next step. So, I will see you next time. Okay, I wasn't, wasn't quite right. We want to get our big brush out because we want to add a little more green to the front. Just to kind of, just kind of put it wherever you want to give it some depth, so that it looks like this is closer. We'll bring it down here. Maybe we'll put some over here. A little more green, and if this green in the background is still wet, it'll kind of run. Well, not run, but fade a little bit. And we can also put some little bits here. No, we're not going to do that. Okay, that'll give us a little foreground action. Maybe we'll dry our brush a little bit and kind of spread that out a little bit. So it's not quite so bright. It's not so stark of an edge. Well, and then we always want to rinse our brushes out between sessions. Make sure that the, the paint is out of our brush. Okay? Okay, what we're going to do next, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to get just a little, just a little bit of water on our flat brush. And then just a little bit of whatever color you want your building to be. And we're going to do something called dry on dry. We don't want our brush to be too wet. We want it to be fairly dry. What we're going to do is start at the bottom or the top. Just kind of bring it up this way. And see how it leaves stripes? It makes it look like real wood. Just kind of do this. Get some more red. We can overlap them if we want. Now this part here is going to be the roof. You can paint up into it if you want to. And as you can see, it's, it doesn't have to be perfect. I want to go over it again just a little bit to get it. better coverage if you want but you don't have to because it's old it's really really old so I got a little too much water in my brush that time if you have too much water you can dip it on your paper towel and there now our barn has color or 
if you chose whatever color you wanted. It doesn't have to be red. Could be brown if you want it to be a cabin or or whatever color you want. You you can choose. And we're gonna leave that alone for a minute. And we're gonna have some 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 fun. We're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some leaves in the sky because we're going to fill in the trunks later. So here we're going to get some water on our big brush and kind of squeeze some of the water out. You can take some out this way and you, we can use, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some green, I'm gonna put it over here. Now you don't have to do this. I'm gonna mix the color with another color like maybe a little, maybe a little blue in there to make them a little darker and bluer. See, I don't know if you can see that. Not really. There, see this color right up here? It's a little darker than this color, isn't it? I'll put some of that up there. Well, it's in my brush. Now, I may have made that too dark to start with. So what we're gonna do, yeah, we'll just use it. It's in your brush now, see? I don't know if you can see that. And what we're gonna do is just make some blobs. These are just little things of leaves. You just kind of tap it. We need more color and less water. I've got too much water in my brush. So what I'll do if I have too much water again I can touch it on here on the paper towel. And we just want to dab, 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 dab. What we're doing is making the tops of the trees. And I will show you why we want to do it this way in a little bit. I need to get some more paint. See, again, I have too much water now. But it is making the darker blob, so I'm going to go with it. We can do that. If they're too dark for you, you can kind of suck up a little bit with a drier brush. Then on the next tree over, I'm going to add a little more blue. Make it a little darker. But we can also add a little purple or black or brown. Let's add some brown, shall we? Maybe it's getting towards the end of the season. And Actually, we're going to add some more of those here, too. Because if you have... more three or more shades that is going to be too brown too brown let's get rid of some of that add some green as you can see I'm getting some colors in my regular paints and what we'll do is we'll wipe those out with paper towel to get back to the regular The regular um, color that's supposed to be there. Now this tree, this next tree, is a little farther away. So it can be a little bit shorter. I'll show you my... See how 
this one's taller and this one's a little shorter and that one's a little shorter as they get farther away so what we'll do is that and we'll get a little bit more of that put some down here now with watercolor Oops, that is way too dark, isn't it? That's right. What we'll do is we'll use that for like a shadowy color in the leaves. And we'll use a little bit of that over here. It's okay to have some of the sky showing through. And it's okay for them to overlap because in real life that's what they would do. Get some of that, put that in here. See how it makes little leaf groups? And then I'm gonna get a little more. little more green and we're gonna put it over here oh, that is still dark because I didn't rinse my brush so we're going to go ahead and do another tree over here see I got a little wet again so. They can be different, you know, size trees and all that. So, I'm also, I'm going to rinse out my brush a little bit, get some of that darker green out because I should have started in watercolors. You should go from dark, sorry, light to dark. And so what I should have done is gotten some yellow. some yellow put that over here to mix it with some green <clears throat> excuse me get some green and mix it with the yellow so it's a little bit yellower and brighter color and kind of put some of those on there a little more yellow maybe whoops now yeah, we'll clean that up See, like you can put some yellow where the sun would be shining on it on the top of the tree because we're gonna say this is like the middle of the day so the sun is almost straight overhead I'll put some up here and we'll get some of that darker color put that down here a little more blue in it. The multiple colors, the multiple shades really give it, makes it look more three dimensional. And I think that is all we're going to be able to do for today. I didn't check the time, but we will go with that. And next we will be putting the roof on the barn and the tree branches and trunks in. Okay, here we go. Well, first, before we move on, I'm going to clean up my colors, see how I can kind of get back to the 
original color by wiping it down. Kind of messy. You guys might actually kind of like it because it's kind of messy. Like get the green out of the blue, and I think that's about it for now. All right. Now, I think I want my barn to have mm, a brown roof. So I'm just going to get a little water in my brush, pick up some brown, maybe a little more water in my brush. We'll see. I'm going to test it on this scrap piece here. There. Then with a light touch, light touch when you're doing the dry brush. We'll go this way and make it look like it has shingles or some other kind of roofing. And it doesn't have to be perfect, like I said before, because it's old. There. Barn roof, just like that. Now, most barn roofs have different angles on them. So, what we're going to do is put a little darker brown. We're going to mix brown with just a little bit of... <laughs> Boy, I really mixed, messed that up, didn't I? With a little bit of black there. We need a little more water. If it's too hard to work with, you can add a little more water. And see how it's... Maybe you can't see. Now it's a little waterier. Let's... For the bottom half of my barn roof, I am just going to go with another layer of the brown. Kind of gives it a look like it's a different angle. Don't forget to rinse out your brushes. So that you don't have colors mixing on you that you don't want. All right. Now we are going to get our little brush. See this one? I have not used this one yet. So I have to get it a little wet first. Get it softer. Okay, there it is. Now, depending on what color you want your trunks to be, you can mix some more of that. Or you can use the same color. I think I want my trunks to be a little darker than just plain brown. So I'm adding some black in there. You could add purple or blue. And then you just kind of put little lines in here and there to indicate that was a little bit bigger than little, but that's okay. The different branches that you would see. Light touch will give you a skinny line, and a heavier touch will give you a fat line. And uh, my touch seems to be pretty heavy right now. Pretty, pretty fat. But anyway, see how that now it looks like the top of the tree has branches in it. And there's something supporting the leaves. You can have the branches coming off. Let's get a little bit more of the paint. Remember, most of the branches are going to come out from the trunk, which is going to be in the middle-ish of the tree. So they should all kind of angle this way. 
like that and that. And they can even come this way, down near the bottom of the tree, or anywhere, actually. I've got some trees in my yard that I have them going every which way. The walnut trees are funny that way. Okay. I think that looks good. And we're going to take... You can choose which brush you want on this next step. I think I'm going to take the flat brush like what we used here. And I'm going to get some more of that color on it. I do want a little water on it, however. And you can make these trunks as fat or as skinny as you want. But remember, the one in the back should be a little skinnier than the others. I've got too much water in my brush. But that's okay because we can do another layer, see? And you just want to... You can do it a wide line with it sideways like this or a skinny line like this. And I'm going to do a skinny line up to there and do this. Have the roots coming out a little bit. There. There's my first tree trunk. And for the next one, I'm going to go maybe a little darker because it's closer. And again, they don't have to be perfect because they're trees. Things in nature aren't necessarily perfect. I'm going to go a little bit bigger. See how I turned my brush to get a skinnier line? Some bigger branches up there, maybe. And the roots. Kind of going off. There. Now. This last one. He's big. He's a big boy. He's, we're going to... We're going to give him a... A bigger and we're gonna make it we're actually gonna yeah gonna make some more color for that some brown because we're running out some black we're making kind of a brownish gray color more brown I think his trunk is going to be right about there. And he's going to be a wide, wide tree, but it's an old apple tree. That's right. I'm going to call it an old apple tree. Could be an old maple. Give it a little more trunk up there. And it's okay to have lines because bark has texture. And you can actually go with a little bit, turn your brush sideways if you want. Get some of that darker stuff on the lighter tree trunks. Or you can get your skinny brush. I'll show you that in a minute. You just kind of make some extra lines like this to give it some interest. Well, let's get the skinny brush out and get some of, I think the darker color would work on that tree too. 
just kind of make little lines in it. Na, 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 na. Maybe a little darker even. I have some darker over here. Maybe we want some lighter in that one. There. Tree trunks. Actually, we're going to call that a maple tree because I don't want to put apples in it. All right. I think we're going to call that a day and see how we go tomorrow or the next day next time we do this we're going to put in a road and some shadows the road is pretty easy um, yeah so make sure you clean out your brushes just by rinsing them and wiping them and I will see you next time. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to take this big brush. This big round one. If you have a flat one, it works fine too. And we're going to actually kind of flatten it out with our fingers like this. Not over the painting. Can you see this? No, right here. Just kind of squeeze it a little bit. We're going to get some brown. Maybe a little bit of that darker color we used in the trees. And that's when we want to flatten it out a bit. We want to start skinnier over here because it's farther away. And we're going to bring the road right through here. And we're going to want to put another layer on because we want our road to and we want it to be wider at this end because it's closer to us. Get some more color on it. There's our road. We'll call that good for now. We might come back and revisit that later after it's dry. And now it's time for our skinny brush again. Because this is a barn, I want it to have barn doors, maybe some windows. So I've got my skinny brush. And what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of I think a little bit of black, maybe with this little bit of brown that I still got in my. And this just takes a very light touch to put your and across. And that's the big, I should say, that's the big barn door. If you want it to have two doors, you can do this. And if you want it to have a window, you just make a little square. And if you have trouble making them that small, you can always fill in the square. As you can see, I'm a little shaky today. That's okay. Oh, I said we were going to do shadows, didn't I? 
let's do some shadows. Now, the thing about shadows, they're not very, not very dark. They're just shadows. And a good color to use for shadows is purple. But you don't want a lot of it. You want to, you want to have, you know, I think we're going to use this brush. We've cleaned it out from using the road. And we're just going to get just purple. Let's see how that looks. Pretty dark. That's okay. We'll just add some more water to it. Because we don't want it dark at all. We want it to be very, very light. I think maybe even some more water. And you can always test it on a piece of paper somewhere else. See how light that is? And first we're going to put some shadows under the trees. I'm just going to kind of dab it. Oh, I have too much water in my brush now. Okay. Dab it under the trees because the sun is going to come. The sun is kind of coming this way. So we have like that. And I've got too much water. So I'm going to take some, a dry paper towel and just kind of blot it up. And that's more like what I was looking for. So take some of that excess water out. Just kind of do this with it. Although now I don't have enough. So <laughs> this is where your shadow would be under the tree. Here too, you can just dab it like that. Maybe we'll get just a little bit more and kind of do that. Probably need a little bit more up there. see that it's wet so that it's kind of running all over that's cool and again now I have too much purple so I'm going to dab some of it up a little more down there dab 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 Now, this brush is way too big to put uh, to put shadows under the barn. So we're going to use a smaller brush. I have to get more paper towel. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now what we're going to do? Uh, clean out our brush first of all, because I apparently didn't do a good job of it last time. So hang on for a sec. All right, I'm gonna get some water in my flat brush. My flat brush here. I'm gonna take some of that purple that we had before. Get plenty of water in it and get just a little bit of this black because I want it a little bit darker. But I, don't, I still want it to be thin, so I'm going to put lots of water in it. Not enough water yet. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it sideways like this under the barn and just kind of drag it across. This will give some shadow 
from the barn roof down here on the ground. You can do it twice if you want a little bit more, or you can just go with the first run. That'll work. And shadows are funny. You can, they can be wider or skinnier depending on where the sun is. We, we're we saying our sun is coming from right overhead. So then I'm also going to dab some smaller shadowy bushes back here. Just little dab, 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 dab. Maybe some shadows in the trees. They don't necessarily, we don't really want it to all be the same height. We want it to be some taller, some smaller. And there we go. Now, we're almost done, but we want something here in the foreground to make it look like it's closer to us, to make that look like it's farther away. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our small brush and we're going to make some grass. What color should we make our grass? How about, well, we can actually, we should, we should, we could actually make lots of colors of grass. And what we're going to do is just bring it up right from the edge and just make curvy lines. Some big, some small. Like that, like that. And what we'll do is, once we finish with this color, or you can just do like this, depending on what kind of grass you have. See, that's a big fat piece of grass right there, isn't it? However you want to do it. This is your painting, so make it look how you want it to look. I'm going to need some more of that paint and get some. And we can even have some come right up here by the road. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we won't put any on that side. So. They can overlap, don't forget. Now, we're gonna do some grass that's kind of dying. So we're gonna make a yellow brown, add some yellow to that brown that we already have. And kind of do some of this in between or with the others. Or just yellow again it's all up to you how do you want your world to look as Bob Ross would say I have some really wavy grass and it doesn't all have to start at the bottom we can have some come up in there like it's farther away You can even have some follow the grass that's already there. And then I think this, this part's gonna be totally optional for you. 
I think we're gonna wanna take some of the little bit darker stuff that we have mixed over here or right out of your paint. Just pick a color and just make little tiny ones over here. Oops, that's not little or tiny, is it? So that they're little smaller than the ones up close. Where did I put it? Is this it? Little clumps of grass work or individual ones, whichever you want. It's kind of like there's a little hill right there. Put some down here. But again, that part is totally optional. We can call it good at any point here. In fact, I think we're going to call this finished. Nope. Unless another optional thing that you can do, take a little of the darker brown with your flat brush and turn it sideways and just make some lanes in here, which I don't have really have much in the way of paint, do I? And we're done. I'm gonna call that good if you want. You can sign your painting. Usually sign my paintings down here in the corner. But we'll just let that go for now. Thanks for watching.